As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the quiet town of Mill Hollow, a chill swept through the air. It was early October, the time when leaves crunched beneath boots, pumpkins appeared on doorsteps, and the nights seemed just a bit longer than they should be. People in town called this time of year the darkening. They never spoke much about why, but those who had been there long enough knew it wasn't just a fancy name for the shift in seasons. There were whispers of old things that stirred in the woods, of strange figures that appeared at the edges of fields just as dusk fell. But no one talked about it in daylight. It was safer that way. Emily Bennett, new to the town, had heard none of the stories. She had moved into an old farmhouse on the outskirts of Mill Hollow, excited to experience her first true autumn. The locals had given her odd looks when she bought the place, murmuring things like, I wouldn't live there if I were you, but she dismissed it as small town superstition. The house had been on the market for years and she couldn't pass up the deal. Her first night in the house was peaceful. A full moon shone through the windows, illuminating the twisted branches of the oaks outside. She unpacked her boxes and settled into her new life. But as she prepared for bed, she noticed something odd. The basement door, which she distinctly remembered closing, was ajar. Emily's heart skipped a beat. She shook off the unease and pulled the door shut again, locking it for good measure. The next morning, she found it open again. As days passed, small, strange occurrences multiplied. Footsteps creaked across the floors at night, and the scent of damp earth lingered in the air, even when all the windows were closed. The basement door would never stay shut. One night, as Emily sat on her couch, flipping through old books she'd found in the attic, she heard a sound. It was faint at first, almost like a whisper, but as she strained her ears, it grew louder. It was coming from the basement. At first, she told herself it was just the wind, but the whispers grew distinct. They were words now. Voices. She couldn't make them out entirely, but they were unmistakable. Her pulse quickened and she felt the hairs on the back of her neck stand up. She gripped the edge of the couch, like staring at the basement door, frozen with indecision. For a long moment, she did nothing, hoping the voices would stop. But they didn't. They became a low, guttural chant, rising from deep within the house. Emily couldn't take it anymore. She grabbed the flashlight from her kitchen drawer and crept toward the basement door. She didn't want to go down there, but she had to know what was making that sound. Slowly, she unlocked the door, the old wood creaking as it swung open. Cold air gusted up from below, carrying with it the stench of decay. As she descended the stairs, her flashlight flickered. She cursed under her breath, smacking the side of it to keep the beam steady. At the bottom of the stairs, the air was thick, damp, and suffocating. The concrete floor was slick with moisture, and the old stone walls seemed to breathe. The chanting grew louder, echoing off the walls. She followed the sound deeper into the basement, her heart pounding in her chest. It was then she noticed the markings on the walls. Strange, ancient symbols carved into the stone, symbols she didn't recognize. Her breath caught in her throat as the temperature plummeted. A figure stood in the far corner of the room. At first, she thought it was a trick of the light, but as her eyes adjusted to the darkness, she saw it clearly. It was tall, gaunt, and shrouded in shadow. Its face, if it had one, was hidden, but Emily could feel its gaze on her. Cold, empty, like a void staring back at her. The chanting stopped. For a moment, there was nothing but silence, the kind that presses down on you and makes your skin crawl. Emily's flashlight flickered once more and then died completely, plunging her into darkness. Panic set in. She fumbled with the flashlight, her hands trembling, but it wouldn't turn back on. In the silence, she heard something else, a soft scraping sound, like nails dragging across stone. She ran. Bolting up the stairs, she slammed the basement door behind her, locking it with shaking hands. She leaned against the door, trying to catch her breath, but the house felt different now. The air was heavier, the shadows darker. And then she heard it, the same soft scraping sound coming from just behind the door. Terrified, Emily ran to her bedroom, locking the door behind her and grabbing her phone. She dialed 911, her voice barely above a whisper as she explained that someone, or something, was in her house. The dispatcher assured her help was on the way, but it felt like hours before she heard the distant wail of sirens. When the police arrived, they searched the house thoroughly. They found nothing in the basement. No figure, no strange carvings, 
nothing. But the door was scratched, as if something had been trying to claw its way out. Emily couldn't stay there anymore. She packed her things and left the house that night, never looking back. She moved into a small apartment in town, but the nightmares followed her. Every night she dreamt of the figure in the basement, its hollow eyes watching her from the shadows. Sometimes in the dead of night, she would wake to the sound of scraping on her apartment walls. She wasn't the only one. A few weeks later, a new family moved into the farmhouse. They too reported strange occurrences, voices in the night, cold drafts, and the basement door that refused to stay closed. One night, the father ventured down into the basement, determined to find the source of the disturbances. He never came back up. The police found him the next day, lying at the bottom of the stairs, his face twisted in terror, his hands bloody from clawing at the stone walls. They said it was an accident that he must have tripped and fallen. But those who had lived in Mill Hollow long enough knew better. The darkening had come again. The town of Black Hollow was small, nestled deep in the woods and surrounded by ancient trees that seemed to whisper in the wind. It was the kind of place where nothing much ever happened, where people knew each other by name and the days passed quietly. But every fall as October rolled in, the mood shifted. Locals would warn each other to stay inside after dark, especially on nights when the moon was full. They spoke of The Watcher, a legend passed down for generations, but no one could say for sure where the story came from. It was just part of the fabric of life in Black Hollow a cautionary tale to keep children from wandering too far from home. Lily and her brother Nate had recently moved to the town with their parents, unaware of the town's ominous history. Their parents had purchased a beautiful old Victorian house on the edge of the woods, its faded charm drawing them in. It was the perfect place to start over, they thought. A fresh beginning. It was a chilly evening in late October when it began. The leaves crunched underfoot as Lily and Nate returned home from a walk, the light fading fast. The woods were eerily silent, the air thick with the scent of damp earth and decay. They noticed something strange as they neared the house, footprints in the soft dirt leading up to their front porch. Not theirs. These were too large and sunk deep into the ground as if someone or something heavy had passed by. The siblings glanced at each other, unease prickling the back of their necks. I didn't see anyone, Nate muttered, his voice low. Neither did I, Lily replied, looking over her shoulder at the shadowy woods. That night, as the wind howled outside, Lily was restless. She tossed and turned in bed, unable to shake the feeling that something was watching her. The house was old, and the creaks and groans it made seemed amplified in the stillness of the night. She finally drifted off, only to be awakened by a sound that chilled her to the bone a soft tapping on her window. Her heart raced as she sat up in bed, her eyes adjusting to the darkness. The window, which overlooked the backyard and the edge of the woods, was slightly open. The tapping came again, more insistent this time. She swallowed hard, telling herself it was just a branch swaying in the wind. But then she saw it, a shadow just beyond the glass. Tall, thin, unmoving. Lily froze, her breath caught in her throat. She couldn't make out the figure's face, but she could feel its eyes on her, cold and relentless. She scrambled out of bed, heart pounding, and bolted down the hall to Nate's room. She found him sitting up in bed, wide-eyed, pale. You saw it too, didn't you? He whispered. Lily nodded, too terrified to speak. The next morning, they tried to tell their parents, but their dad waved it off as a nightmare, a trick of the light. He reminded them of how old the house was, how the wind played tricks on the windows. But Lily and Nate couldn't shake the unease that gnawed at them. That evening, after dinner, their parents went out for a quick errand, leaving the siblings alone in the house. As darkness fell, the tension grew thick. They sat in the living room, barely speaking, the old grandfather clock ticking loudly in the silence. Outside, the wind picked up, and the trees cast long shadows across the walls. Every creak, every groan of the house seemed magnified, feeding their growing anxiety. It was then that they heard the footsteps, slow, deliberate, heavy footsteps coming from the upstairs hallway. Lily's blood ran cold as she glanced at Nate. His face had gone ashen. Mom and Dad? Lily called out, though she knew it couldn't be them. They weren't supposed to be back yet. The footsteps continued, growing louder, closer. Whoever 
or whatever, was upstairs was moving toward the stairs. Without thinking, Nate grabbed her arm, pulling her toward the back door. We need to get out of here, he whispered, his voice shaking. They hurried out into the backyard, the cold air hitting them like a wall. Behind them, they heard the unmistakable sound of the front door creaking open. Slowly, they ran. The woods seemed to swallow them as they fled into the trees, the branches snagging at their clothes, the darkness disorienting. They didn't stop running until they reached the edge of a small clearing, gasping for breath, their hearts pounding in their ears. For a moment, they stood in silence, listening. But the night had fallen unnaturally quiet. No wind, no rustling of leaves, just a suffocating stillness. Then from the shadows at the edge of the clearing, a figure stepped forward, tall, thin, its face hidden in shadow. It stood just beyond the tree line, watching them. Nate backed up slowly, his voice barely a whisper. We have to go back. Lily shook her head. We can't go back. It's in the house. The figure took a step closer. Suddenly there was a snap, a twig breaking, and the figure seemed to retreat, melting back into the woods as if it had never been there. But the siblings knew better. It was still watching, waiting. They made their way back to the house, their hearts in their throats. When they finally reached the porch, their parents' car was in the driveway, and the lights were on inside. They rushed in, gasping out their story, but their parents didn't believe them. They insisted it was just the woods playing tricks, or an animal passing by. Nothing more. But that night, after their parents had gone to bed, Lily and Nate heard it again. The soft, rhythmic tapping at the window. This time, it was louder, more insistent. And then came the footsteps, heavy, deliberate, echoing through the house. Lily crept to her window, her stomach twisting in knots, and peered out. The figure stood at the edge of the yard, closer than before, its face still hidden, but now it was clearer, more real. Its head tilted, as though it knew she was watching. The next morning, they found footprints in the soft earth beneath their windows, large, deep, just like before. But this time, there was something else. Scratched into the wood of the window frame, as if carved by a sharp, clawed hand, was a single word. Watcher. For the next few nights, the same events repeated. Footsteps in the hallway, the tapping at the windows, the figure growing bolder, closer. But it never entered the house. It was waiting. Watching. Desperate for answers, Lily and Nate went to the local library, searching for anything they could find about the town's history. Buried in old newspapers and records, they finally uncovered a story from over a hundred years ago about a man who had lived alone in the woods, just beyond where their house now stood. He had been obsessed with watching people, standing at the edges of their properties, staring into their windows at night. The townsfolk had grown so afraid of him that one night they stormed his cabin and and in a fit of fear and rage, they killed him. His body was never found, but ever since, there had been sightings of a figure, a watcher, who returned every fall to claim those who dared look back. And now he was watching them, waiting for the moment when they'd make the mistake of looking too long, the moment when the shadows would come for them. As the next full moon approached, Lily and Nate knew they couldn't stay, not in that house, not in Black Hollow, because the watcher never left, and every year, he grew bolder, and they knew he was still watching, always watching. The fog rolled in thick that evening, swallowing the streets of the sleepy town of Willow Creek. It was a cold October night, the kind where the air felt damp and heavy, clinging to your skin like something alive. The residents of the town had learned to stay indoors when the fog came. There were too many stories too many whispered warnings about the things that stirred within the mist, but nobody talked about those stories in public. It was safer to pretend they didn't exist, except for Tyler. Tyler was the kind of person who didn't believe in legends or ghost stories. A skeptic, he dismissed the warnings as nothing more than superstitious nonsense. He had only moved to Willow Creek a few months ago, renting a cheap apartment above the local bakery while he worked on writing his first novel. The town had seemed perfect, quiet, picturesque, isolated. He liked the solitude. It helped him think. When he heard the warnings about the fog, about how the townspeople locked their doors and drew their curtains at the first sign of it, sign of it, he couldn't help but laugh. What could possibly be out there in the mist that scared them so much? It was just weather, after all. Moisture in the air, nothing more. 
But that night, as the fog crept in, Tyler was restless. He stood at his window, looking out into the thick, swirling gray, feeling a strange pull. The streets were completely empty and as if the town had been abandoned. The only sound was the occasional drip of water falling from the eaves of the building. For a moment, he thought he saw something move, just a shadow, a flicker of movement at the edge of the streetlight's halo before it disappeared into the fog. His heart quickened, but he shook his head, dismissing it. His imagination was getting the better of him. Still, there was a strange tension in the air that night, a feeling of being watched. Curiosity got the better of him. He grabbed his jacket, shoved his hands into his pockets, and stepped outside. The fog was even thicker than it had seemed from the window, curling around his legs and swirling in eerie patterns as he walked. The buildings on either side of him were reduced to vague, hulking shapes in the mist, and the familiar street felt alien, transformed by the fog into something unfamiliar. He walked for a while, the only sound the soft scuff of his boots on the wet pavement. He passed by darkened houses with curtains drawn tight as if the town itself was holding its breath. It wasn't long before he realized he had wandered further than he intended. The streets looked the same, every corner identical, and the fog distorted everything, making it hard to tell where he was. The street signs were unreadable in the mist, and the buildings looked like looming shadows. Suddenly, a sound broke through the silence, a low, faint whisper, barely audible but unmistakable. It came from somewhere within the fog, close by. Tyler froze, straining to hear. The whisper came again, this time clearer, though the words were still too muffled to understand. Hello, he called out, his voice echoing strangely in the fog. No response. Just the soft whisper, like someone speaking just out of earshot. He turned in a slow circle, trying to pinpoint the source, but the fog was so thick it was impossible to tell where it was coming from. Who's there? He shouted, a flicker of unease starting to crawl up his spine. Again, no answer. Only the whisper. It was constant now, low and indistinct, and it was starting to get under his skin. He turned back the way he thought he had come, walking faster now, his breath misting in the cold air, but no matter which way he turned, the whisper seemed to follow, just out of reach. And then, something shifted in the fog. Ahead of him, a figure appeared. At first, it was just a dark shape, barely visible through the thick mist, but as Tyler squinted, it became clearer. A person, standing completely still, watching him. Hey! Tyler called out, his voice shaking slightly. The figure didn't move. It just stood there, unnaturally still, almost as if it were part of the fog itself. Tyler felt a cold chill slide down his spine. Something about the way the figure was standing, the way it seemed to blend into the mist, unsettled him. He took a cautious step forward, but the figure didn't react. It just watched. And then, without warning, it moved. Not towards him, but away. It turned slowly, its movements jerky and unnatural, and started walking deeper into the fog, disappearing into the swirling gray. Tyler hesitated for only a second before following. He didn't know why. Maybe it was the eerie pull of the figure, the way it seemed to be leading him somewhere, or maybe it was the growing sense of dread that had settled in his chest. Whatever it was, he couldn't stop himself. The whisper grew louder the further he followed the figure. The words were still indistinguishable, but the tone had changed. It was insistent now, almost urgent. Tyler quickened his pace, his heart pounding in his chest. He was starting to feel dizzy, disoriented. The fog seemed to close in around him, suffocating and thick, and the figure was little more than a shadow ahead of him, barely visible. Suddenly, the whisper stopped. Tyler halted, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The silence was oppressive, the air around him thick and still. The figure was gone. And then, from the fog behind him, came a sound that made his blood turn to ice. A slow, deliberate footstep. Tyler spun around, his heart hammering in his chest. There was nothing there just the fog swirling lazily around him, but he could feel it. Something was there, just out of sight, watching him, waiting. Another footstep, closer this time. The hairs on the back of his neck stood up, and cold terror gripped him. He turned and ran, blindly crashing through the fog, his breath coming in panic gasps. The whispers had returned, louder now, echoing all around him. He couldn't tell where they were coming from, but they were close, too close. His foot caught on something, and he stumbled, hitting the ground hard. 
The impact knocked the wind out of him, and for a moment he lay there, dazed and disoriented. Slowly he pushed himself up, gasping for air. That's when he saw it, the figure from before, standing right in front of him, towering over him in the fog. Its face, or what should have been its face, was nothing but a blank, featureless void. And yet Tyler could feel it staring at him, its presence oppressive and overwhelming. He scrambled backward, heart racing, but the figure didn't move. Then in a voice like a thousand whispers layered on top of each other, it spoke. Why did you follow? Tyler's blood ran cold, his mind raced, but no words would come. The figure took a step closer, its movement slow and deliberate, as if savoring the moment. Now you're one of us, it whispered. Before Tyler could scream, the fog closed in around him, thick and suffocating. The whispers rose to a deafening crescendo, and then... Silence. When the fog lifted the next morning, Tyler was gone. His apartment above the bakery remained untouched, his belongings left exactly as they had been the night before. The people of Willow Creek went about their day as usual, though they avoided talking about the strange disappearance. But as the fog returned the next night, heavier and thicker than before, some, some swore they saw a figure standing at the edge of town, watching from within the mist. And if you listened closely, you could still hear the faint, desperate whisper of someone calling for help, lost forever in the fog.